You're watching the Justin Henry Show on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Make sure you follow on all social media platforms. The top. The top. Waiver wire quarterbacks for the week. And yes, this is big because a lot of people may be on the verge of losing Jalen Hurts short week. I doubt he plays this week. I, I seriously doubt that Jalen Hurts gets in there this week. So... Who are the options? Who can you pick up to replace a guy like Jalen Hurts, who is a 20 to 25 point play every single time he plays? The fact is you can't. You can't always replace that. You can't always replace the 25 points. What we can try to do is find it. Aaron Rodgers goes up against Miami next week, and he hasn't had a 300-yard game all season long. But going up against Miami, this Packer team is going to have to put up points in order to fight for their playoff lives. And they haven't been able to stop a lot of teams, a lot of quarterbacks this season. So we've seen a, multiple quarterbacks put up over 30 fantasy points against the Miami Dolphins this year. In Miami, weather will be perfect. Perfect weather. Go ahead and get Aaron Rodgers if he's available on your waivers. Obviously, the backup for Jalen Hurts is somebody that you can pick up to. Gardner Minshew, who's had experience being a starting quarterback in the NFL at times and plays decent, right? This this Philly team does have weapons. Uh, and so, you know, when they when you got guys like A.J. Brown, you got Devontae Smith, you got a potentially Dallas Goddard coming back. This run game is what drives this team, and there's also potential for the air game. In a high-scoring matchup, supposedly against Dallas, they're going to need him to be at his best. So do I see him throwing for 300 yards and three TDs? No. But what I do see is the potential for 250 to score, maybe a little bit more there uh, if he can get you going. So Gardner Minshew is, is you know, a, a safe play. He'll have a role if Jalen Hurts is out. But obviously, he's not one of those true high upside guys. Uh, Brock Purdy would be next. I'm not really excited about him because the matchup against the Commanders should be a defensive one. I see the Niners sticking to the run game. It is at home, and the Niners do have weapons, obviously. So they we've seen him have 15, 21, and 16 points over the last three games. If you want to get Brock Purdy, that's fine. Just know that there is a very, very low ceiling when it comes to Brock Purdy. Probably going to be somewhere between that 14 to 18 point mark, no matter what this game. Uh, especially he was dealing with the injury coming in the last week's game. Zach Wilson scored 20 fantasy points this last week. Am I buying him? No. And so this is a guy that I'd put a little bit further down the list. Uh, tough game against Jacksonville this Thursday. Weather is expected to be a factor for this game. Uh, there's some, expected to be some rain and wind in the forecast. One of the one of the worst games, I'd say, of the week. So obviously the Cleveland-New Orleans game we'll talk about here in a second is the worst game of the week by far. Cleveland, New Orleans is the worst, but Jets and uh, Jacksonville should be double-digit wins. Uh, yes, and this is going to be a, a definitely a, a lower-scoring, lower-throwing game, I'd say. So Zach Wilson is more of a dart throw in super flex leagues at this point. Matt Ryan up against the Chargers is a desperation play that could go a lot of different ways. He could have 250 uh, yards and two, three TDs, or he could be turnover machine and get benched. So I think Matt Ryan is one of those dart throw plays. If you're looking for a little bit more upside against the Chargers on Monday night, gives you guys a, a Hail Mary play on Monday night. I'm down by 30. I'm down by 25 and you have a chance. So uh, to me, Matt Ryan, you're going to want to get him if, if you're looking more for like a desperation type play. All right, next up, Sam Darnold is, is not a bad option as well, and we've seen him play decent this year, going up against a tough Lions team who has a has one of the worst secondaries, at least in the league. They've been playing a lot better lately, though. This Detroit Lions team has been playing a lot better, but we saw Zach Wilson put up 20 points against them, and if DJ Moore is in, in back there, uh, back on the field like he was last week, um, I think this is a good start. It's a good start in super flex leagues, or if you are just searching for injury, like you had injury problems at the quarterback uh, position, you lost Kyler Murray, something of that nature, go ahead and get Sam Darnold. Uh, Daniel Jones against Minnesota is also a decent start. Not, not a true, just recommendation. Uh, but Daniel Jones is another option that you could throw out there. I would feel more comf comfortable with a guy like Daniel Jones for the floor. Not the ceiling at all against Minnesota, who we saw. Matt Ryan played really well against Minnesota, too. So Daniel Jones has been okay. Using his legs on the ground has given him a nice, safe floor. Not a lot of true upside there when it comes to Daniel Jones. And if you're looking for options like, uh, you know, uh, Trevor Lawrence, that's actually not a great pickup this week against a tough Jets defense on uh, on Thursday night football with the weather going bad. I do not recommend Trevor Lawrence or Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson has been a play. Uh, a lot of people picked him up. I do not recommend Desha Deshaun Watson at all this week. Snow is expected. 
Up to 40 mile an hour winds are expected. Look for a different option besides Deshaun Watson this week. All right, let's move into running backs. Uh, so let's go to running backs for the waiver wire right now. Uh, obviously, we've seen a couple running backs go down, which has impacted uh, fantasy lineups. Jonathan Taylor is out for the year. We've seen Nick Chubb miss practice today. So just be very cautious when it comes to running back. But this is also the time when you can find a lot of high upside guys, youth movement, or just players who are, are playing for a role next year, right? So the immediate situation is to look at Indianapolis. I talked about it a little bit earlier. Deion Jackson and Zach Moss. Now, Zach Moss should see the lion's share of the carries, which is, you know, on most weeks should be anywhere between 15 to 20 carries, right, uh, it, for this for this Colts offense. Deion Jackson is also going to see around 15 touches, but he should be able to get some passing game work as well. So the ceiling is a little bit lower for Zach Moss, a lot higher for Deion Jackson because of the passing game work and the red zone usage. So this Colts team going up against the Chargers is going to have to put up points. I expect Deion Jackson, especially if this game is a negative game script for the for the uh, for the the Colts, right? If it's a negative game script for the Colts, last week against the Vikings, they were up 33 points, so they were able to run Zach Moss 24 times. But against this Chargers team, they're probably going to be down at some point. I expect Deion Jackson to be more involved in the hurry-up game, in the pass-catching game. He's more familiar with the with the offense, and it also has played that role before. So give me Deion Jackson uh, in that one over Zach Moss. Zach Moss, if Deion Jackson is unavailable or you're still looking for running back, like he would be the second tier out of those two that I pick up. Someone who has earned a lot bigger role, Tyler Algier, coming off the bye. This Falcons team is going towards the youth movement. Um, only thing is their schedule isn't that great, but he should have a, a decent day this week. He's earned touches. He performed well, uh, but this team's going up against a very tough Baltimore Ravens defense. So it's not that I expect a you know a huge game out of Tyler Algier or even a terrible game. I think he'll see the workload. It's Cordell Patterson is involved as well, but he's definitely somebody I would not leave on waivers in case this team in week 17 says, you know what, you're full send, you're our running back, Cordell Patterson, we're going to shut you down for these last two games. I could see something like that happening. So uh, Cordell Patterson was already dealing with an injury earlier on this year. I'm not saying that will happen, but it's in the realm of possibility. So for me, Tyler Algier is a must pick up, probably my favorite pickup out of the week uh, for running back position. Uh, Khalil Herbert's another interesting name I just talked about a little bit earlier. Khalil Herbert's coming off of IR announced today. Um, and a lot of people were excited about Khalil Herbert. You know, should I pick him up? Should should I go get him? Should I start him? Uh, Khalil Herbert's not going to be a guy that you want to have in your fantasy lineups. He's just not. Uh, Khalil Herbert is going to be coming off of IR, but the Bears do face two very tough re run defenses in the next two weeks when you talk about the Buffalo Bills and the Detroit Lions. So both of those defenses are top tier at stopping running backs. Dave Montgomery's already in the fold, so it's going to be a timeshare type thing. Even if you're like a 16-man league, I'm not really recommending Khalil Herbert. I just wanted to address it um, since I know a lot of people were asking about it. Make sure Michael Carter is not floating on your waivers. He got in the end zone. He looked a little bit better last week. He's starting to take over this role uh, a little bit more so than Bam Knight. So make sure Michael Carter is just not floating around on your waivers. Chuba Hubbard has tough matchups as well. It's the only reason I don't have him ranked a little bit higher on this list. Uh, Chuba Hubbard has taken over the backfield for the Carolina Panthers. And to me, going up against Detroit this week is going to be very tough. And Tampa Bay next week is also going to be very tough. So the matchups, man, for some of these guys, they have the opportunity. It's just the matchups will be tough. So it'll be up to you to determine if they can go into your lineups or not. And then the last one, the last two I want to talk about are more dart throws. Jalen Warren, who would need to see a Najee injury, but he's been a little bit more involved in the offense over the last week or two. And then Marlon Mack, who has taken over a pass catching role with Russ back. He becomes a little bit more interesting. I just don't want to play a lot of Denver players. There's a lot of Denver players that have, you know, questionable value when you talk about Greg Dolchich, Marlon Mack, Jerry Judy, a lot of fringe players for this Broncos team. So I'd be very careful with Marlon Mack.